chapter of Ecclesiastes begins, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. But recently, it seems that we are living in a very different time and a very different season. Unprecedented is the word that TV announcers, writers, your friends, and probably you have used in the last few months to describe what it's like to live in the time of COVID-19. And when you factor in the extent of worldwide, instantaneous communications, then humankind has truly never dealt with a situation like this. In this challenging time, so-called normal life has disappeared. People feel fearful. They don't sleep well. They don't feel well. Their emotions are all over the map. They have trouble focusing on their tasks. They are forgetful, tired, overwhelmed, depressed, and frankly, let's admit it, very irritated. A friend of mine says that she feels like she's been put in jail for a crime she didn't commit. What have we really been experiencing? As a counselor, I believe that we have been suffering from two things. The first is psychological trauma, the very same kind of trauma which could just have easily occurred on the battlefield or because of an accident, an assault, a fire, or flood, any human caused or natural catastrophe. This type of trauma is never our fault, but it affects our thinking, our behavior, our physical and psychological well-being. To make matters worse, at the same time, we have also been experiencing grief. It's the grief of losing the rhythm of our regular lives. And no matter how complicated or how simple they were, they were our lives. And we don't remember giving anyone or anything permission to come in and upend it. So in random order, we deal with the recurring stages of grief, denial, anger, depression, bargaining, and once in a while, we do have moments of acceptance. It really is a heavy lift to deal with psychological trauma and grief at the same time. But please be assured that while our thoughts, our emotions, and behaviors may seem unusual, they are actually very normal responses to a very abnormal situation. 
Now that we've entered the green phase here in Adams County, there are some hopeful signs on the horizon. But we are certainly not out of the darkness by any means. So how do we deal with this darkness? How are we going to get back into the light? I must share that the first service I ever attended at St. James was Christmas Eve of 2017. I remember that service vividly, and I especially remember the sermon that Pastor Mike preached that evening. In it, he told this wonderful story about the famous Scottish writer, Robert Louis Stevenson. As a little boy, all of six years old, his favorite activity was to watch the lamplighters go around the square in the front of his Edinburgh home and light up the night. When his parents asked him why he was so fascinated with them, he said, it's because they're poking holes in the darkness. Now that's an impressive metaphor for a six-year-old to have said, but it was the perfect image to mark the beginning of the Christmas season. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Right now, the various media are providing all kinds of suggestions for dealing with the pandemic and its challenges. These include, go for a walk, take up a new sport, read those books that have been piling up in the corner, adopt a needy animal, practice mindfulness, find a new hobby, and the list goes on and on. Now, there's nothing wrong with these ideas. However, did you notice they're all about doing something? We are a doing culture, and I freely admit I am one of those goal-oriented doers. But the problem is, after a while, we become human doings, and we're supposed to be human beings. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I used to live in the upper Midwest, and I had my favorite getaways at Bayfield, Wisconsin. And if you look it up on the map, it's way right up at the top of Wisconsin. It sits right on Lake Superior. Let me tell you about Bayfield. It doesn't have a mall. It doesn't even have a stoplight. The attraction there is lighthouses, and sailing in the Apostle Islands. The couple who ran my favorite motel there were originally from Chicago. They had been living the middle class, upwardly mobile, doing kind of life until one day they had a serious chat and they said, you know, if we keep this up, this is going to kill us. So they quit their jobs, they moped moved to Bayfield, and they bought the motel. And then they said, then came this transition from doing to be. Here, they said, we go very easy on the schedule, because what we do depends on what the lake does. And if the lake decides to roll the fog in on one sunny morning we thought we had, we're not going to drive 20 miles for groceries. Not that day. Maybe not even the next day. But they said, what we do have time for is thinking, reflecting, appreciating, reaching out to help others, caring for the environment, and in the process, providing a peaceful refuge for our guests. Perhaps we can use our friends in Bayfield as an alternative role model to focus on our being. So rather than asking yourself, what do I do or what I want to do, ask yourself, who am I now as a person? Who am I as a child of God? What are my gifts? Am I using them the way I would like? 
How would I like to use them? How can I help? Who can I help? And who do I want to be when the clouds lift? The more clarity we get around these questions, the more holes we poke into that darkness. And if we do all of this, the world can be a far brighter place when we come out than when we went in. Thank you for listening. Peace.
God, rise to serve. Thanks be to God.